when I'm reading scripts, I'm quite uh, quite instinctive. I think um, I just go by what my gut feels about them, and and it tends to be. I've got sort of quite an alarm for female characters that are kind of being um, niceified, if you like. There's a thing that happens also with um, women, with, with female characters, where occasionally writers will sort of demonise them a little bit in order to make the male lead a bit more heroic, so I've got a big sort of radar for that and I'm like, nope. But, um, but I think generally at the moment writing's a lot better for women than it's been for a long time, so um, I'm just looking for things that have something to say socially or politically um, and that also touch me in a human way, like it, it's, that's the combination for me, it's um, sort of politics and humanity, it's those two things. When I have a new character to look at, I tend to have... The approach does vary a little bit, depending on, on what the character is, but there are certain things with the script that I'll always do. So I read the script a minimum of like five, six times, um, uh, take a note of what other characters say about that character, what that character says about herself, um, decide which is true, what are true and what are not. Um, and, and then it's just a process of working out objectives in every scene, I do quite a, a detailed character background a lot of the time, so um, it's it's not something that you have to do. I think a lot of actors don't do it. I, I, I feel like for me, it just makes me feel um, less like I'm searching for them when I'm on set. Um, I feel like if I have a really sort of researched, solid knowledge of where I was five years ago, it just helps me in that moment. So. Um, and it informs all the choices that I make with characters in scenes. So, and then it's really absolutely about listening. I sort of I learn my lines, and I, I but I don't make really choices necessarily about how I'm going to play every moment. I let myself find that in the moment. I think one of the worst things an actor can do is over prepare because I think it just deadens you to to anything spontaneous happening in the moment. The, the best things, the best moments I've ever had have been accidental, they've been found by something that happened in a moment um, and a response to it. So um, it's really about doing a lot of preparation so that once you get on set, you can just leave yourself alone and, and, and let things happen. I think it can be helpful if, if the actors that you're working with are working in a similar way, but, um, but it doesn't have to be the case because I think different actors, we're all individuals and, and different things work for different actors. Um, I think as long as what those actors are doing is free and fresh, um, then you can kind of bounce off each other. I, I think I do struggle when, when someone's made rigid choices about I'm going to play this line like this and this line like this, because it just it leaves the other actor very little freedom. Um, and that's something I'm very conscious of myself not doing, uh, forcing another actor into a decision because I've made one myself. I think the way I work has developed a lot over time. I think uh, I had quite a rigid training at drama school um, and I think a lot of the techniques that I learned there, while they're really useful, I just don't think you can have a sort of like iron approach to it because every project is different, the people that you're working with are different. Like I'm doing the A word at the moment and a lot of my work is with a seven year old boy so, so it's like you've just got to be free, you've just got to be listening. and and attentive and, and generous towards the other actors. I think naturally with experience um, of how sets work and what you need to get, because they move a lot faster than than you expect. And so you have to be ready. And I think your, your technique develops over time to make sure that you're ready when they're ready. My greatest challenge creatively um, has been the transition from, from theatre into screen, because I did a lot of theatre in the beginning and I found it very freeing because I was just there with the other characters in a space and the audience were far away from me and it, you know, it felt very authentic. And with working for screen, I couldn't suspend my disbelief of the objects that were all around me. That was quite a steep learning curve and, and it happened in one project. Um, there was a, a, a thing that I did that was called Murder that Beardra Larson directed and it was monologues straight to camera and looking down the barrel of the lens was sort of the most terrifying thing I'd ever done in a, in a professional context, but it sort of made me now unafraid of the camera and I needed that. I think I personally am a huge fan of collaboration. Like I just think everything works better when everyone's on the same side trying to do the same thing, but it is very much determined by the team. There are lots of directors that don't want to do that, lots of writers that don't want to do that. Um, on The Replacement, which was something that I shot last year, um, 
Jo Ahern wrote and directed it, which really helped because it meant that the script was always movable. It was evolving all the time and he could take things out or put things in based on what the actors were doing on set. So it felt like a really, it just felt like we were all, Joe, myself and Vicky were all together making this thing. And for me, that's the most satisfying way to work. Um, but you do get directors that are gonna say, stand there and say it like this. And you, you just have to find a way of personalizing whatever reading they're giving you and making it work um, from inside yourself. Because you can always tell when you watch something and an actor has been told to stand there and move their hand like this, you can tell. Um, so you have to, I guess, just find a way of, of yeah, making that come from somewhere inside you. But I, I do find that way of working quite challenging. I think it's just better when everyone's equal. I think the advice I would give to an aspiring actor is to focus on the work, not the career. Um, there's something that I see a lot with, like I mentor a couple of young actors and and they talk a lot about career trajectory and things like that. And 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 actually, none of that matters. That that's accidental. That's a that's a you know I did six years of theatre before I stepped in front of a camera and and I wouldn't change that. You know I think focus on the work, focus on the technique, focus on learning and honing and finessing what you do. Watch the people around you learn from, you know, when you work with older actors, more experienced actors, they, they often can switch from having a chat about tea to being really acutely in a scene in a moment. Watch how they do that, ask them. The other thing is to really remain rooted in who you are. I think the tendency is to go, oh, they want me to be a bit more like that, or maybe I'd get more work if I was a bit more like this. No, forget that. Be rooted in who you are, don't lose it, because that authenticity, you can't manufacture. I think, it's a, I think it's a thing now to sort of like polish yourself up for the industry and I, I just don't think it works. I think the people, the, the characters, the actors that you really believe are the ones that are still rooted within something raw in themselves. So yeah, hang on to that if you can.